You are watching Trends. Every Thursday, we take a peek at the future to see what's ahead of us. Overfishing. How long until we run out of fish? Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome back. We're sure many of you love feasting on seafood, and some of you might even enjoy fishing yourselves. You're probably also aware that fishing methods have changed dramatically over the years. Well, in today's video, we're reflecting on a global phenomenon that impacts us all, overfishing. What if? What if there is no fish available to feed the 7 billion plus people in the world? What if we are forced to look for a substitute of this rich, tasty source of protein? What if we are forced to farm our fish rather than traditional fishing from the ocean? What if our favorite fish species that we enjoy as a delicacy ceased to exist? Well, Aluxers, before you start thinking about what our world would look like without your favorite fish on the plate, let's dive in and understand how we can run out of fish in the future. Introduction now, Aluxers, some of you might be wondering, what do we exactly mean when we say the word overfishing? Well, in simple terms, overfishing refers to the malpractice of fishing certain types of fish at a higher rate than the time taken for them to restore naturally. In today's world of rapid technological advancements, even the simplest act of fishing has evolved to a great extent, and the disruptive techniques of fishing used in recent years have resulted in irreversible damage to our marine life. Globally, fish is considered to be a major source of protein, and with population well over 7 billion people, you can imagine the quantities in which fish is consumed all over the world. The worldwide consumption of seafood has doubled in the past 50 years, and currently the annual global demand for seafood is 143.8 million tons. With such hefty demand all over the world, the fishing economy definitely looks promising, but let's take a closer look at it. The Fishing Economy As of June 2019, it was estimated that 177.8 million fish will be produced this year, out of which 89% will be used for direct consumption. Worldwide, China is the top producer of fish, and the global seafood market is valued at more than 150 billion US dollars. At present, the Japanese food giant Maruha Nishiro Corporation is the largest fishing company by revenue, and the top nine fishing companies form one third of the global revenue generated by fishing. The fishing industry is highly fragmented at a local level, but the top 13 fishing companies in the world control 40% of the most valuable and biggest species consumed internationally. Platinum arowana is the most expensive fish in the world and is valued at 400,000 US dollars. With such a high market value for a single fish, you can imagine how aggressive the fishing economy is right now. So now, let us try to understand what techniques the leading fishing companies are using to control global sales. Disruptive Fishing Techniques The advancement in technology and the changing global consumer taste has led to numerous disruptive fishing techniques that have created an imbalance in various fish ecosystems. One such practice is shark finning. Shark finning is a technique in which the fins of a shark are cut and separated from the body and used for sale as a delicacy. After the fins are removed, the sharks are alive but unable to swim in the oceans properly, and this severely affects their survival. Technological advancements have also resulted in improved fishing nets and large-scale fishing hulls, powered by heavy-duty engines that can catch fish way more effectively than the age-old methods of fishing hooks. Many of the advanced technologies that are used for fishing at an industrial level, like radar, sonar, or the use of helicopters, were actually developed for warfare, and today are being used on a daily basis for fishing in the deep seas. Another such practice is bottom trawling, in which large weighted nets are dragged on the ocean floor sweeping up any ocean habitat that comes in its way. This practice is considered to be one of the most aggressive means of fishing and results in harm not only to the fish but also to other oceanic habitats like deep sea coral. Many deep sea coral structures found in various parts of the world date back thousands of years and form the pillars of the oceanic ecosystem, and a single swipe of the heavy metal trawler is sufficient to wipe away its existence. The advancement in technology of fast freezing and processing has also encouraged these disruptive fishing practices because it's now possible to rapidly process your catch while still at sea and transform it into ready-to-cook fish. 
In fact, many industrial haulers used for catching tons of fish in the deep seas are equipped with onboard processing machinery that increases the efficiency of the fishing process. Now, we're not totally against these technological advancements, but Aluxers, do you think we have a right to encroach the oceans and destroy the natural ecosystem just to satisfy our own food fantasies? Well, just like all of us, there are a few others who think and act differently and are investing more in sustainable technology for a better fishing industry. So now let's explore what all these alternatives look like. Aquapod Fish Farm the idea of fish farming is not a new one to the fishing industry. There are several near-shore fish farms that are located on the coastal areas of major fish-consuming countries like China, and half of the fish we consume at present are farmed. But similar to the disruptive techniques we discussed before, these near-shore fish farming techniques are harmful for the fish ecosystem. Due to the overcrowding of fish farms situated in the near shore waters, large amounts of feed waste is created from ocean floors, which accumulates over the years and results in ecosystem deadlock. The search for alternatives to such disruptive fishing and fish farming practices has resulted in innovative techniques like offshore fish farming. The offshore fish farming technique involves constructing an aquapod in the form of a spherical cage net that's released in the deep seas to act as a breeder for offshore fish farms. The aquapods are made up of recyclable material paired with metal structures that prevent formation of algae. Unlike the near-shore fish farming, this technique helps in breeding fish in their natural habitat and avoids overcrowding or polluting the near-shore waters, as a result of which it helps in balancing the ocean's ecosystem without compromising on the quality of the fish produce. These aquapods are considered to be the future of fish farming and, powered by GPS and AI, could also be mobilized in deep water. And just like those aquapods in the deep sea, we're sure you Aluxers love to stay online no matter where you are in the world. And that's why we recommend using a VPN. It's a super easy to use piece of software that protects your data online so the government or other companies can't spy on you and you can enjoy the internet you know and love. We partnered with the great folks at NordVPN to bring you an amazing offer. If you go to alux.com slash VPN and sign up using the code ALUX, you'll get 75% off a three-year plan and a full month for free to see if you find it valuable. Protect yourself on the internet today by going to alux.com slash VPN. Challenges and Threats Technological advancements like fish farming have helped us in meeting the ever-rising worldwide demand for fish, but the continuance of disruptive fishing techniques can in fact lead us to a day where we will run out of naturally produced fish. The ocean habitats have thrived over a period of thousands of years, and with the present scale of adverse deep-sea fishing practices, it would be impossible to restore it to normal. Although tech entrepreneurs and enthusiasts are investing in more sustainable fishing techniques, it's also the responsibility of governments to put a check on overfishing practices in their oceanic borders. The top fishing companies in the world have signed the Seafood Business for Ocean Stewardship initiative that aims at ending unsustainable fishing practices, but it will take a lot of innovation to fulfill this aim in the near future. Even as individuals, we have a responsibility of choosing better seafood options in order to avoid the extinction of particular species of fish. Conclusion With the rising world population and increasing demand for better fish, the rapid industrialization of the fishing process is merely unstoppable. But, in order to maintain good ecological balance and allow the oceans to restore its fish naturally, it is necessary to adopt more sustainable fishing practices. We're confident that new innovations like aquapod fish farms will definitely help in striking the right kind of balance and avoid overfishing in the future. Question. Okay, Aluxers, we know we have a large international audience, and we'd like to know if the place you belong to is facing this pressing issue of overfishing. We would also like to know what you would do if we ran out of fish in the future. Would you look for a substitute to your favorite fish or stop eating seafood altogether? And of course, as a thank you for sticking with us until the end, here's your bonus piece of content. As many of you Aluxers must be aware, a net is one of the oldest tools used for fishing. And any guesses about where and when it was first used? Well, one of the oldest fishing nets in the world dates back to 8300 BC, made up of willow. It was found in the Karelian town of Antrea. 
And interestingly enough, in 2018, fish net sinkers were found in South Korea, which dated back 29,000 years. These limestone sinkers have grooves carved into them in order to tie at the bottom of the nets while catching small fish. And this definitely proves how old the act of fishing truly is. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos for you to watch next. As always, the conversation continues on social media. Thanks again, and we can't wait to have you back tomorrow.